Hey guys, welcome back to the video on collision detection. This is what we have so far. Um, let me just go a quick, quick recap so that we can know where we're at. Um, we have set the sprite and started setting sizes, position, and have it drawn, moving into the size with, to the side with delta position, and then we have a new rectangle wall, which goes right over the wall because we want to draw a rectangle over the wall and the arrow. Okay, that was my super quick summary. Now what we need to do is draw a rectangle right over the arrow. So we have the rectangle arrow, and now we have to create it just one time in the create method. You don't really need to do it in the create method. I just like to initiate it once there, uh, just to create a new rectangle object only once, and then you can, you know, just start setting the position within the render method instead of creating a new object. So that's just what I prefer. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Rectangle arrow is equal to new rectangle arrow. Oh, is that spelled right? Whatever. Um, what? What am I even saying? Uh, rectangle. Wow. Okay, and that's going to be like this. Okay, so the x and y is going to be the bottom left of the tiny 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 rectangle we, that we cr created um let me just uh, let me just kind of give some more background to this basically the reason we're choosing 15.7 instead of this original point of the arrow is because we want to uh, essentially have it right on the sprite arrow the sprite arrow is only 16 by 4, and the point just happens to be at 15.7, or right around there. So that's why we want to create a right there, is 15.7 out of the 16 of the arrow. Um, whereas if we use something like 503, that would, that would just be a weird random number. So that's why we're using these values. Okay, so let's create that arrow. Um, this is just the first create arrow. So we have our bottom left, so 15.7. Oh, I'm typing in the wrong spot. Right here. 15.7F. And the reason we say F is so that we can make that a float value instead of double. Uh, where's that notepad? There's that notepad. 1.78 is the Y value. Now, when, we, when you create a new rectangle object within libgdx and the libgdx rectangle class, not the Java one, even though I think the Java one is the same. Um, you specify the bottom left hand, but the bottom left basically, and then the width and the height. The width, uh, it only moves, I think, it goes from 0 0.7 to 0 0.71875, so we're going to need this value, but 0 0.01875, and that's going to be the width. So let me paste that and then make sure that we set that to a zero, otherwise that'd be wrong. And then you need the F. And then the height, if I remember right, it was it moved up 0 0.002 F. And you can kind of play around with these values to make them whatever you want to make sure that the collision gets detected perfectly. Uh, now that we made this rectangle arrow, you have to realize that we have a flaw here. Um, although that we have it um, at 15.7 F, that's uh, how to explain this. That's not correlating with our sprite. Um, our sprite is going to be 40 units all the way over to the left. So what we have to do is we have to say x position and then plus. So this is going to be negative 40, which is the bottom left of our sprite, and then plus 15.7, which is the x value of the arrow point, and then our um, arrow is going to be at negative 40, 0, and then we want to go 1.78 uh, up so that we can reach the arrow point because the arrow isn't perfectly in the middle. The bottom left is at 0, is at negative 40, 0, and then it's a little bit above y equals 0. The arrow point is above y equals 0. And then it moves this width and height. That's just the width and height of our tiny, tiny rectangle. Um, now that we have this created, we can go ahead and move it as the arrow moves. So we hit set 
sprite position right here. A sprite arrow, uh, sprite arrow position right here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with rectangle arrow. Um, dot set position. Okay, and this is going to take the bottom left of the arrow. It's still going to be the same width and height, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. The Y is going to stay the same, 1.78F. 1.78F. And then the X value is the one that's going to be changing. Now, X position, you know, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need because um, that's going to be changing as the arrow changes. So we want to make sure that the um, that the arrow is on key that that rectangle is on key with the arrow. So this is the same thing that we have up here: x position plus fifteen point seven f. Um, we have the same thing here because x position that's going to increase twenty per second. Um, that we have that happening right here. If you don't get that, please watch the delta time video. Um, but anyways, it's going to be increasing at 20 meters per second. So in two seconds, this will increase to the the arrow will move to zero zero, and we want to make sure that the rectangle is along there with it. So now that we have the rectangle in the perfect spot and the other rectangle in the perfect spot, we want to make sure and allow um. A collision to happen. So a collision will happen when basically the two overlap. So we're going to use the rectangle arrow dot overlaps method to get a boolean if it is overlapping or not. And if it is overlapping, we want to make sure neither the rectangle or the sprite arrow are moving. So we're not going to let this x position value to change. So let's go ahead and create that boolean that I was talking about. So boolean is overlapping. Uh, is it two p's or is it one p? Ah, whatever. I don't care. Um, is equal to rectangle arrow dot overlaps, and then this is going to take rectangle wall. So if the two rectangles are overlapping, we have a collision. Um, so therefore, this value right here, x position, can only change if the two are not overlapping. So if, exclamation point, so if is overlapping is not overlapping, I mean, if is overlapping is set to false, then we can change the x position to something fancy. But in the case that is overlapping is set to true, then this will not run, and x position will not change, and the collision will look like an actual collision, and therefore we stop the arrow, stop the rectangle. It's it's gonna work perfectly. So let's hope I didn't mess up in the code, and this runs like it should. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes, that's that's perfect right there. As you can see, if you really really zoom up, the tip of the arrow just stopped right on target. If we wanted the arrow to dig in a little bit, we could have moved the rectangle a tiny bit to the left, which is right where you play around with these numbers. Right here, you set the X position a little bit to the left. And yes, that was perfect right there. I'm happy I got that right on the first try because that means I don't have to start re-filming or whatever, or changing around code. Let me show you how you could play around with this. You can, make, you can move the arrow a little bit over to the left, so let's change it over to 15.3. That's that's really going to dig the arrow in the wall. But I'm just showing you how you can play around with these values if you want to. So let's check this out, and it should again just a tiny bit. Uh, it it did a little bit, but it's so small. I don't think you can tell. It's it, you'd have to zoom in a lot. Um, so basically, what I hope you can do with this video is and go and make your own collision detection and play around with that so that when we actually start making a game which i think is going to be a flappy bird type game so i'm i'm excited for that i got that suggestion from one of my subscribers and i really like that idea so i'm going to probably do that and we're going to need a collision 
uh, detection kind of idea once we hit a pipe or whatever. So play around with that, uh, understand it, and then when it comes time to making that in the game, you'll fully grasp that idea, no problem. Um, I know I don't have any links to these uh, to these um, images that I'm using, but these are really really simple images. So if I don't have them up yet, the links to the images that is, then you know you can use anything you want. And then and actually, if you're going to be messing around with your own images, then you'll learn more rather than just copying what I do. So hopefully, um, you take that as motivation to make your own images with their own sizes. That way you can be more efficient in your coding, which is really key if you want to be making, you know, Flappy Bird games in two nights, which is apparently what that developer did. Um, with, the, with the kind of expertise that you get from understanding your own code, you, you can do that. You can definitely do that. So I'm hoping you guys can learn quite a bit from these tutorials, and I'm hoping you understand collision detection a little bit more now. It's an advanced concept, and it gets a lot more, a lot, 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 lot more advanced once you have something, some kind of crazy texture, you know. But just know that you can make more arrows, um, and more, not more arrows, more rectangles. So, like I said, you can have like five rectangles on the arrows, and if either one of them overlaps a wall or whatever, then you've clearly got a hit, and in that case, you know you've got a collision, whatever. So, yeah, this is the end of the video. I'm going to stop talking about pointless stuff now. Uh, have a nice day, and please subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Thank you very much.